wherever Indians go in the world. This community integrates and becomes successful. This year in India, across the entire urban India, we'll sell about 550 to 600,000. This year in China is a terrible year for their housing market. And guess what? They are going to sell 1.1 crore homes. We're committed to being a net zero carbon company by 2035 and with the progress that we're making, we'll get there well before that. You can't tell the consumer what is right. The consumer is always right. You shouldn't have this belief that you have to be successful in every decision that you make. You can't be. No one can be. Hello and welcome to another episode of My Way. My guest today is Abhishek Loda of Macrotech Developers. Of course, he needs no introduction. Someone who has pretty much changed the skyline of the Mumbai metropolitan region in the last 20 years. Abhishek, thanks a lot for joining us on the show. Thank you, Sonia. Great to be with you today. You know, it's been a great journey for you as well, right? I mean, you've been 20 years in this business now. Yes, 20 years now. And a lot has changed in the Mumbai region. But your journey, what has changed from then to now? I guess 20 years has been uh, truly, uh, you know, a learning experience and uh, one's been able to uh, see how India is changing, how the aspirations of our people are changing and how people are really wanting to uh, do the best possible for their families and for themselves. And I think, uh, you know, as part of that process, the role that we play uh, as Mumbai's leading developer, creating uh, some of the best quality of spaces to live or work in uh, is something something which we think we've added value to our city and to our people. And that for me has been personally the most fulfilling part. You know, on my podcast, I want to understand more about the person rather than the business, right? So, but before that, we were talking about how there is so much untapped potential in the Indian market, real estate market, compared to developed markets like China. And I can see that smile on your face. But you tell us, over the next decade, what kind of growth do you see in the Indian real estate industry compared to our peers? Uh, Sonia, so we'll uh, do a little bit of business only and then cut back to the personal <laughs> stuff that you want to focus on. But to that question that you had, uh, you know, this year in India, across uh, the entire urban India, we'll sell about 550 to 600,000 homes, which are built by developers to sell to people who want to use it for their own use or investment or whatever. This year in China is a terrible year for their housing market. You know, things are really bad in China. And guess what? They are going to sell 1.1 crore homes. Wow. So that is almost in a 20, bad market in a in a terrible year. Yeah. So this is a great year for Indian housing, is what people think or or is. So and they'll be selling twenty times more with the same population. Yeah, and they've been doing this for many many years. Their peak, they sold one point eight crore homes in a year. Okay. So the point I'm saying is that as India, uh, you know, given the job creation, the central leadership and therefore the investment which will happen in this country and the incomes will go up, wages will go up, an increasing number of people are going to want to own homes and they all want to own good quality homes. Nobody wants, you know, a poor quality home, which is just because it is cheap. Uh, so everybody knows home is so important to themselves. And therefore, we feel that Indian housing has a very long runway. We are in year three of at least a of a very long cycle, a 15 year or longer cycle. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so housing will grow a lot in scale. You know, like I said, only five, five, 550, five and a half to six lakh homes being sold this year. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, China is selling 1.1 crore homes this year. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's a long, long way to go. Especially in the, in Maharashtra, in the Mumbai region, right? I mean, there's so much connectivity happening as well with the Trans Harbour, with the Coastal Road Project, the Metro, etc. Do you think this is going to open up the areas outside of the main Mumbai area? region. Uh, I, I think that's spaces that you guys are focusing on as well. So I think, you know, as our populations grow, the city needs a breathing room. We need to expand. And I think some of the infrastructure being done by the Maharashtra government is quite incredible. You know, all the things that you mentioned and then later we'll have more things happen. There's a lot happening, metro, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, uh, there will be more parts of this of the mainland uh, which will get added onto Mumbai city. And they will, you know, uh, offer different options for people uh, to live or work in. However, you know, I think we, we should not believe that just because a link has opened up or a train station has opened up, suddenly, uh, you know, things will change dramatically. It's a long process of 10, 15, 20 years, as you may have even seen in cases like Navi Mumbai. Before, you know, things get all the things, uh, before all the things that people need to live in a place come into place, right? You need schools, you need hospitals, you need retail, uh, you need parks. So all of it takes time. Yeah. So, but yes, Mumbai is growing larger. And I think, you know, if uh, this infrastructure continues to remain supported by strong job creation, 
then mumbai will keep you know having uh, uh, ho- uh, housing expanding in different directions okay now to your personal journey yes. right as uh, the mumbai skyline has reached stratospheric level so has your career what has the biggest uh, career lesson been for you in this 20 year journey uh, for me uh, the biggest career uh, lesson has been uh, that you're only as good as the people you work with uh so for me is very very important about who i work with not in, in just in terms of their ability or their intellect but also their values uh so i think i think that's something you as you grow older you discover you know what's important to you and for me you know these things about intellect uh has always been important i like you know having smart people people smarter than me around uh, who i can work with but i think uh you know understanding that values make such a big difference has been uh you know something uh which has become clearer over time and a lot of young people people now are taking to entrepreneurship right you seeing this whole startup community blow up um, younger people have great ideas uh, what is your advice to the younger generation now someone who perhaps even wants to enter this industry i think india you you first have to believe in india uh india is a country not of only of great economic potential but we have an amazing culture wherever indians go in the world this community integrates and becomes successful mm. we have a prime minister in the uk who's indian we have a vice president in the us who's indian and you know that list can go on yeah. and in in business in medicine everywhere mm. so you you are we are very lucky i am and all of us are that we are born into this culture mm-hmm. and we should value it and we should respect it mm-hmm. and then as entrepreneurs you know you know your business well you know where the opportunity lies the only thing i would say is that if you believe that the maximum uh, level of risk is x mm-hmm. then s- stay at 0.5 0.6 0.7x mm-hmm. don't stretch the uh you know uh the rubber band to its maximum mm. uh you know if you believe you have a runway for 12 months with the funds that you have mm. in your mind it should be 6 7 months that's it and the, before that you need to raise funds in fact i was going to ask you about that in terms of risk taking ability how are you positioned i mean are you a risk taker and has it worked for you you just spoke about how you'd rather you know have a little more leeway right I think all entrepreneurs by definition are risk Artistic. takers so so we're all all risk takers but I think the point is risk has to be uh mitigated risk is not to be celebrated risk is real you have to take it mm-hmm. and then you have to mitigate it mm-hmm. you mitigate it by effort by preparedness uh by uh, by having great teams around you and by making sure that your you know financials are conservative mm-hmm. uh when it comes to whether it's leverage or it's you know funding runway or whatever it is because you don't know what's going to happen who knew mm-hmm. covid would happen mm-hmm. so suppose you entered into covid on with you know last two months of funding then what do you do mm-hmm. so you have to recognize the fact that we are human and we live in an uncertain world so keep some buffer that buffer is important okay and as an entrepreneur as a business owner failure is something that comes to you you know uh, repeatedly right over the course of say a 20 year business you see several times several uh, periods where you go through failure how do you come out of it without uh, being too ruffled see uh you said that entrepreneurs are risk takers risk by definition means that the the outcome is not certainly in your favor mm-hmm. that's why it is risk and therefore there is a reward to it mm-hmm. so when you are playing the risk game you have to be aware of the fact that as you play the risk game some th- some things will go your way and some will not go your way and it's absolutely fine mm-hmm. uh i think so you know you shouldn't have this belief that you have to be successful in every decision that you make you can't be mm-hmm. no one can be mm-hmm. So uh, you know for someone who's done this business for about uh, what two, you've been in this business for 20 years I think now yes. before that you were with McKinsey as well so I'm sure there are a lot of learnings from that what do you see as the next 10 years for you personally is this a space that you want to grow you want to uh, sort of you know look at some ancillary spaces because i understand from a lot of entrepreneurs that i speak to that every 15 20 years there's a niche to kind of you know redefine themselves kind of disrupt their own model do you feel that I you know uh I believe that we are, I'm I'm very lucky to be in a space where so much is happening and so much new gets to get done within the business you know every every project every asset class every service that we offer has so much to learn you know real estate is one of the most complex businesses mm-hmm. there is so there is always so much new to learn so much new to build capability in and so on uh but uh, but you know over the next 10 years what i want to do is to make sure that i can use all this success uh in a more focused manner more of my time uh to build 
back for our country i believe it's the responsibility it's not uh, you know something you're doing anything great it's the responsibility for anyone successful mm. to, to make back. sure that our society and our nation is better off because you are in that in that place uh, and because you are what we are what we are because of our families and because of our society and our nation i think most of us are committed to supporting our family and doing well for them the same should apply to our society and to our nation okay uh, loda is doing a lot the group is doing a lot in this whole sustainability space as well you want to quickly tell us what is the goal is sustainability in real estate something that is actually feasible in the here and the now and what all is happening in this space in real estate particularly see uh you know uh, most of your most of your listeners or viewers will be surprised to know that one third of all embedded carbon is in the buildings and buildings have a lifespan of 60 70 80 years so decisions we are making today when those buildings are demolished in you know by the end of the century that carbon will get released mm. and it's not about carbon alone you know we we conserve huge amounts of energy because all of us live and work in these buildings we conserve huge amounts of water mm. we you know the land that we build on is precious and therefore it is highly important it's not a choice mm. for real estate development to be highly focused on sustainability mm. we as a company are focused on being the global leader when it comes to sustainable development in the real estate space we're committed to being a net zero carbon company by 2035 and with the progress that we are making we'll get there well before that mm. and in general i believe that the indian industry is well poised because i think the cost of doing it right is not very large mm. it's a matter of effort and it's a matter of thought and that's the reason we've tied up with the rocky mountain institute which is a well renowned non-profit organization based in the us to set up an accelerator a lab mm. where global and indian solutions can be pulled together tested in the indian context and then we make the knowledge and research such freely available to everybody in the uh, in the world including of course everybody in india mm. so that we hope that people can adopt this and we can have a real estate industry which contributes to you know the fighting of global warming and more importantly making our existence with nature a lot more sustainable it may not matter so much in your and my lifetime mm. but ultimately we have to leave a better place for future generations oh, absolutely across all industries right not just in real estate and i'm glad you got you folks are making that initiative and taking that effort uh, before we end the discussion as somebody who has run a successful business for more than two decades now what has your biggest learning been and what has your biggest failure been my biggest uh, learning in this process uh, has been uh, the fact that you can't tell the consumer what is right the consumer is always right so you have to be with the consumer you have to understand the consumer psyche and then you have to cater to the consumer psyche you can uplift the psyche you can train them to think about things which they have never thought about mm -hmm. but ultimately they're always right mm -hmm. okay. uh, and uh, and and my biggest uh, uh, failure if you may uh, say is that at one point we took excessive leverage and uh, that for me was a big learning i don't treat it as failure because it's a part of uh, of life and you know therefore we are a lot more conservative now uh, in terms of how we want to be structured from a capital structure perspective and uh, i think that's really a, a learning for life for me that's an astute financial lesson as well right not to go high on leverage yes personally absolutely. and professionally yes yes <laughs> okay abhishek thanks a lot for joining us really appreciate your thoughts here thank you thank you sonia great to be with you thank you for watching cnbc tv 18 for all the latest news and updates do follow us on our social media platforms